successful class together from our uh, academic support to compliance to our medical staff to our uh, strength and conditioning staff equipment. You know, everybody up in the office, travel, uh, you know, coaches are calling uh, at all hours trying to change flights. And, uh, and then certainly our, our coaches and our players do a tremendous job uh, hosting the prospective student athletes who may come on campus. And we work together the way that we have really for five years now, but uh, uh, you have days like you did today, which I think was a good day for us. I think we filled a lot of needs. And uh, you're never going to hit on everybody. Uh, every target, but uh, um, we're excited about the ones that did this, decided to become UCLA Bruins today. We've, um, we've signed 29 high school players. We're still working on a couple more that could come in here later tonight. Can't talk about those specifically. We've got a couple transfers that I can't speak about specifically, but uh, when we look at the class as a whole, we filled a lot of needs, and so we're excited about it. And uh, I just want to thank everybody that was involved everybody to, uh, for, for their help and, uh, and it'll pay off for us in the long run. So, fire away. You mentioned wanting to get bigger at size. How, how much do you kind of want about doing that? Well, I think we added some quality players that have some some size to them. You know, at positions is where it's important. You know, you talk about a guy like Jalen Starks, a running back, who's a 245 pound running back. Brandon uh, Stevens, who's 6'2", 205, and he'll grow to 220. Um, those are big men. You talk about the guys along the offensive line with, with Paco and, and Mike, and, uh, and, uh, and obviously uh, Alex has got some room to grow. Uh, I can't mention you know, the other guy, but we added some size there. And you look at the defensive line, we added, at this point, we've added six defensive linemen to the group, and they're all you know, good size guy or great size potential. And you look at the four linebackers we signed, you know, with Mike and Breland and Lakenny and Chris, and they're all big, good looking, well developed guys. So I think we added we added size and we added quality size, not just size. At tight end and fullback specifically, do you have the numbers you need for what you want to do next season or is it still we will right next process? season? We will, yeah. We'll have a couple position changes that we'll announce in the spring. Some guys that are currently on our roster, and, and, and hopefully we'll have a couple more additions that will help us. But uh, you know, that's a position that we have not emphasized a lot here in the last couple of years, the last four years, and it's going to be a little bit more of an emphasis. It's not like we're going to be, you know, running the wishbone. We've got a pretty good quarterback in Josh Rosen, so we like him to be throwing it. But we do want to utilize fullbacks and tight ends, so we're going to have to build depth there from within, and then you know, by bringing guys in either as transfers or as recruits. Did the season that Josh had uh, did it make it easier to get some of those rece receivers in here? Um, probably. I mean, nobody referenced it specifically. I think where Josh helped was as a recruiter. You know, he volunteered to host almost every week. Uh, he was a tremendous host, uh, and, and he is a big name. And, they, and those players did know that he was a, a you know a really great young player. And then when they got a chance to get to know him see what kind of quality person he is as well. I think that's where maybe it helped more than just the fact that he was you know, tremendously um, successful as a freshman. You know, it's difficult to project who might come in and have an impact, but if you could just maybe talk a little about a few guys that you think could, like Mike Warren. Well, I think God, you're right. It is hard. It is hard. Uh, I think the first thing you have to do is think about who we lost, you know, and so uh, defensively, when you think about a guy like Miles Jack or Kenny Clark, you know, two tremendous players, and then you're able to replace them with guys like Boss Tagaloa and Mike Juarez, uh, and along with Kenny and, and those other guys, we'll see who steps up, Chris, and, and uh, you know, we'll see, but uh, adding Nick Terry is a JC guy, Chikozzi is a JC guy, that gives us some, you know, guys that could step in and play right away. Um, offensively, uh, well, Jordan Wilson, the tight end's gonna he's gonna play right away because he's our tight end right now. <laughs> uh, and then our long snapper, our kicker, and our punter, they're gonna play right away because they're our long snapper, kicker, and our punter. So, but I, you're right, it's hard to tell. You know, you see where they are when they get here. I think that uh, you know we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine 
nine players that will be here for spring ball. So those guys will certainly have a little bit of an advantage over the guys that come over, come up, uh, come in in the fall. Usually recruiting is a long haul, but Brandon Stevens, I mean, that was what, a couple of weeks? It was, uh, <laughs> it was about 10 days, actually. It was just the luck of uh, being in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, I didn't thank the development staff at the start, but you know, the fact that uh, we were able to go out and raise enough money where we could have time to utilize private air crafts really helped us there. Uh, I was headed to Houston and got word that, uh, that Brandon had decommitted from Stanford and we detoured to Dallas and I was able to go into his high school on a Monday morning early and sit down with him for a couple hours and then as I was walking out of the hospital, out of the, uh, out of the high school, happened to walk by a lady and her eyes just looked like the kid that I just talked to and we just kind of looked back, sat down for another couple hours. But I'd have been one minute sooner or one minute later, we'd have completely missed each other. And uh, we just hit it off and was able to talk him into coming here for a visit rather than a, an SEC school and it worked out well. So it's timing sometimes and it just works out. How much did the private planes help this recruiting cycle? Well, you know, we've had, we have some tremendous donors that, uh, that are really committed to this program and they do that by many, many different ways. But their passion, you know, for this program is evident, especially when they, you know, come out of pocket to help us get around as a staff to visit these players. In today's recruiting world, if you want to recruit at the highest level, which we're trying to do, uh, I don't believe it's possible without the use of private airfare, I mean, or aircraft. There's days in this last three weeks where I was in, you know, three or four cities in a day. And there's just no way you could have done that. Three or four states, there's no way you could have done that without the use of private aircraft. And, uh, you know, we're lucky that we have those people that are willing to do that and that Josh that's willing to, you know, stick his neck, neck out there and ask for it. When you're getting a guy like Burton from Sarah, do you feel like you're making inroads where you need to in Southern California? Well, I think we've done well in Southern California traditionally. Um, I think when you talk about Sarah, you, I think you know, we all assume that that's just a, a stronghold for, for another uh, program in this area. Uh, but you know, we've done we've done okay there. You know, but Brandon Bird is certainly a quality player. You know, he follows uh, Jordan Lasney here, he's a, he's a quality player, and uh, and uh, Dwight Williams. You know, is a quality player who hasn't you know seen the field yet. But you know, we we don't. But we're going to recruit California hard. You know, Southern California hard. We've had some success. This is the fourth year in a row you've had the player of the year, or at least for the Times, the Times player, the high school player of the year um, in, in the recruiting class. Have you noticed that players are, as, as you've progressed here as a program, have you noticed that players locally are even more receptive to UCLA as you've gone on? Well, I think when you win, that helps, certainly. And when you play an exciting brand of football, which we have offensively, especially the last four years, when you've set every... UCLA record, offensive record there is in the past, past four years. Uh, when you have a little bit of success against your cross crown rival, which we had up until this year, um, when you uh, can promote an environment like UCLA, which is prestigious academically, it's a healthy environment socially, um, you know, people are drawn to that. I think the most important thing though is winning, you know, creating a winning environment. I think that we're doing that. We're not where we want to be, we're moving in the right direction. But, over the last four years, we've tied the win total for most over a four-year period. So we're moving in the right direction. We've got to hurry to get there. Um, even, even with Josh Rosen, how critical was it to sign two or even three quarterbacks in this class? Yeah, and I, and I think it depends. You're speaking about Diamond as the third Diamond Lee, who, you know, we'll list him as an athlete, but he's going to come in here and, and, and give it a shot at quarterback. He played well at Sean Rock this senior year as a quarterback. You know, really the only two scholarship quarterbacks we had on our roster were Josh and Mike Faithful. And so we needed to add some quality players to that position. So going and getting Matt Lynch and Devon Monster, and then, uh, you know, have a Diamond Lee with his tremendous athleticism and the way he progressed as a senior quarterback in here, I think will really help us. I think it was, it was critical for us. You closed really well um, in this recruiting process. What have you learned during your tenure, uh, and how have you adjusted your game plan in those final weeks? Well, you just, it, it's, a, it's a marathon. I mean, it's a, it, the, the recruiting process a lot of times starts, you know, when these kids are freshmen or sophomores in high school. 
Sometimes it starts 10 days before. You know, it varies. The most important thing is trying to build a relationship based upon trust and uh, that's mutually beneficial. You know, they're looking for something at UCLA and we're looking for something in them as players and students and citizens. And uh, it's just being persistent. It's uh, continuing to nurture those, develop those relationships. It's, it's really never giving up on a guy. And, uh, and just continuing to build that relationship. It's really all about relationships. You know, you call it recruiting, it's relationship building. And when you come to the point where both parties feel comfortable with each other and there's a plan for success, then usually it, it works out. Do you feel like you've uh, gotten better at doing that? As a staff? Throughout the years? As, well, as I hope so. I mean, you know, it, it's, uh, we, we, we'll go back right after this ends and self-evaluate and do an after-action report on what we did well, what we need to do better, um, how we can improve, how we can adapt. We do that every year and in every phase. So um, I would hope we're getting better, and I hope we get better next year as well. What kind of impact did some of the staff changes have on recruiting to Kennedy moving the offensive coordinator and Marcus and Rick? Um, I don't know that they had uh, a tremendous effect. Uh, you know, most of the guys that we signed, we were in pretty good shape with, with all of them, you know, before the staff changes were made. Uh, I think anything you can, anytime you can provide some stability, I think that's helpful because I think it shows a commitment from the staff to the university which is inviting to a parent or it's uh, inviting to a student athlete. You know, they don't necessarily like change and we've been able to provide some stability here uh, with the staff and when you promote from within, you know, I think that helps you create that, that, that feeling of stability which I as a parent myself, you know, kids that have been recruited, it's uh, tremendously important for me to know that the people that are recruiting them are most likely going to be involved in their lives when they get to that school. So I think just promoting from within and quality promotion from within really help us. All right. Thanks, guys.